The U.S. government says it believes an American taken captive in Syria in 2012 is still alive. Austin Tice, a freelance journalist and former Marine, hasn't been seen since a video with his captors emerged after his disappearance in 2012. Tice had gone to... Uh, photograph and report what was happening to ordinary Syrians during the civil war that was going on there. And in August of 2012, he was south of Damascus planning to drive to Lebanon when he vanished before reaching the border. The U.S. government believes he is being held captive still in Syria. And joining us now uh, with reaction to news is Austin Tice's parents, Deborah and Mark Tice. Good morning to the both of you. Good morning, Lauren. Thank Good you morning. for having us. Absolutely. i happy to just uh, really put the word out to everyone if they haven't heard of Austin's story, but just such a remarkable young man. Uh, I believe he was in uh, law school at Georgetown when he felt compelled to go to Syria and report on what was going on there. I mean, he was a former Marine having worked in the Middle East. Um, so this, this was something that was important to him. And you had been kept in, in pretty close communication with him throughout the that process, right? Yes, we had. Somebody somewhere had had communication with him almost every day while he was in Syria. And so th this has been eight years now, and I know two years ago it was announced that there was reason to believe that, that he was still alive and being held captive by the Syrian government. What do you know now, and, and, and what efforts do you know are, are, are being made to, to work on his release? Well, we absolutely know that he is alive. He's waiting to come home. Uh, we know he's being held in Syria. Uh, just a few weeks ago, uh, a contingent from the United States government met with Syrian officials in Damascus. Uh, they began a dialogue, and what we need to happen now is for that dialogue to continue and for President Trump, who's been incredibly supportive, uh, to really take charge of this process and oversee it on a day-to-day -day basis until we get Austin home. Is, is there added pressure that needs to be put in other areas to make this deal happen? I know there had been some pressure on Russia. Uh, are, are there efforts? Is, is there something that, the, uh, that everyday people in the community can do? I mean, obviously, the more that this is in the news, uh, the better to get him home. Right, well, we don't think of it as pressure. We think of it as encouragement. We're in the last few miles of a very, very long and difficult marathon. And so um, what we would like for people to do is to go to the whitehouse.gov uh, website and they can reach out to the president directly and say, you have brought so many Americans home. You've made a commitment to Austin. We know that you can do this. Mr. President, please get your hands on this. Please take charge of this until we see Austin Lot 3. And, you know, at, on those last tiring miles, that kind of encouragement can get you across the finish line. So that's what we're really asking people to do is to reach out to the president and encourage him to uh, to bring, in, bring, it, bring this to a good conclusion. Yeah, I, I mean, such a remarkable young man. You talk about you talk about that last mile and and having hope. I can't, just as a mother, I can't imagine what the last eight years has been like. But I know that you have had to have an, a, a remarkable amount of of hope and strength. Can you talk about what you've envisioned those moments being like when you're reunited with your son? Well, it's it's really hard to imagine because it's been so long now and i'm just thinking you know he's so strong to be staying alive to be hoping to come home and um so if is he gonna look as strong as he is how's that gonna play out i mean the most important thing is just um you know returning him to life liberty and the pursuit of happiness and and making that possible for him yeah, and I guess I would add another thing that we are certain of from talking to other former captives and experts in this area is Austin will come back more of an amazing man than he was when he left. Uh, this experience is going to make him stronger, and, and uh, we know he's going to have an incredible, impactful life uh, once he gets home. We count on that. Absolutely. 
I mean, he, he's a remarkable man, an Eagle Scout. He was a, a former Marine, just incredibly bright, uh, working on his law degree at Georgetown Law. He's uh, an, an award-winning journalist. I mean, this is somebody that I know you have absolute faith is is surviving this and and will come back um, and and do big things. The most important thing for Austin right now, because of where we are involved with the Syrians, we finally have that dialogue that we've been asking for since 2014. And um, the most important thing is for the president to get involved. He's the one that needs to give the orders to do the things that need to happen to bring Austin home. And so we just want him to, to just get right back in there and put his hands all over it and get this done. He can get this done. We believe that. Yeah. And we believe he can he can get it done, you know, before, in time for, in time for Christmas. Time for Austin, <laughs> time for Christmas. All we want for Christmas right. is Austin. Have you, right. have you had direct contact with uh, the president or anybody in the administration uh, in, in working this out and in, in getting to that uh, last stretch? Yes, we have on a, a very regular basis with several officials that are really focused on Austin and uh, working hard on this. Uh, we've, we've had communication with the president. We've met him one time, uh, but uh, we've had notes from him and we've had assurances from him. And of course, we, like you, uh, saw him on television during one of the, the COVID updates uh, asking the Syrian government to work with us and to help bring us in home. So that's really you know, what we're looking to happen. Uh, we need to hold up our end and, and keep this dialogue going until Austin's home. Yeah. We, uh, we share in uh, putting the word out to everybody in the community to reach out to the administration and, and help get this done. And I, I, I pray for that reunion. I, I, I look forward to, to hearing about that and reading about that. And I, I know it will happen for you. So thank you for your time this morning and your tireless effort over the last eight years to, to get, this, get this done. Thank you, Lauren. And those prayers are so important. We, we believe they comfort and strengthen Austin and we know that they keep us going. Yes. And so we do, we do rely on God for his abundant grace yes. and mercy. And it's very Thank special you. to us to be reaching out to the community there, the, the, the Marine community, the military community, uh, because we know that many of them are praying for him and, and uh, have his back. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, thank you both. Appreciate it. And um, stay in touch. Hopefully get this done. So Mark and Deborah Tice, thank you for your time this morning. Thank you. Thank you for your time, Lauren. Thank, thank you, you, Lauren. My pleasure. We'll be